I made over six figures in profit my first year flipping name brand products on Amazon FBA Online Arbitrage, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the best online arbitrage software for 2023. Everyone thinks you need a ton of complicated tools and software that cost a bunch of money, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm gonna show you how I earned my own seven-figure Amazon online arbitrage operation with really inexpensive tools that are easy to use. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so we're here inside my screen. We're here on an Amazon listing page. This is where the two softwares we're gonna be talking about actually go ahead and live. So the first software we're gonna talk about, I'll get it pulled up right here, is SellerAmp SAS, which is actually our product research tool. This costs a little bit less than $20 per month. And what this actually does is it lets us know what type of profit we're going to make on a specific product. It helps us find additional products and it tells us a lot of other helpful information about each and every single product we're going to go, go ahead and want to analyze. Because when we're doing Amazon Online Arbitrage, you're going to be looking to sell dozens of different products at a time. And that lets you be nice and diversified and not overcommit to one type of item right here. So we can see SellerAmp pops up over here on the right. We can actually go ahead and move it over to the left as well right here. We can even embed it right here and make it bigger and such on here. The main component of SellerAmp you're going to be using every single day is the prof calculator right here. So that's over here on the left side of the screen. We can make it a little bit bigger for this example. Um, we can see the important things you want to see. We can see the product title, product image matches over here on Amazon. And we can see that this product is a 2K BSR. So that lets us know how quick this product sells as well as the estimated sales right here. It's a good rule of thumb, especially as a beginner. You want to be focused on products that have less than a 100,000 BSR right here. And then an estimated sales of uh, typically over 100, um, although the BSR is more important right here. So we can see this product is a 2K BSR, which is incredibly low. It has about 400 sales per month right here, although I'm a lot more focused on the BSR. And then we can actually see a breakdown of the profit on this. So if we go ahead and see this beauty item right here, we can take a look on this website right here and see that this is on sale from $8 down to $5.60 right here. And then you guys saw right when I went to this website, there's actually an additional 15% code we can actually give them our email and phone number to get, right? So luckily we can use that again and again right here if you just add in different emails and such. And that's just one of the big parts of online arbitrage is actually going ahead and getting stuff on sale and using coupons. So this is an example of a product that's not only on sale, we can also coupon it, right? So it's at $8 right here. And then we coupon this, or it's on sale down to $5.60 right here. So we can plug that in on seller amp right here and see that's going to make us about $3 profit per sale and about a 50% ROI. I'd recommend setting an ROI minimum of about 30% right there. However, we're also getting another 15% off, right? So to do that, we can actually do math in seller amp and we can multiply this by 0.85 to take off that 15% and it becomes an even better item. Now it becomes about $3 profit per unit, $3.50. And we're getting almost an 80% ROI. And that's after product cost, Amazon fees, everything like that, even shipping to Amazon. And then you add in your sales tax percentage on the seller and backend so that it literally factors in all the numbers right here. So we can see the exact profit numbers on this product based on its historical price. Scrolling down, we can see on SellerAmp, there's some other helpful information here, how high the rank is, um, some further stuff about the FBA and FBM sellers. The alerts tab is very important. We can see no known IP uh, complaint issues, private labels unlikely, Amazon hasn't shared the buy box recently. We can also see a mini keep a chart right here and then the profit calculator in detail as well. So the nice part is we're mainly gonna be focusing on FBA. However, if you did want to FBM this, what we could do is we can toggle this over to FBM and then scroll up here and actually see the weight on this product is only like 0 0.42 ounces. So this would probably ship for like four bucks FBM. So we can see the FBM numbers is that this would make about a 60% ROI. So this specific product is better to FBA rather than FBM. The ROI is a little bit higher. We're going to see a total breakdown of the cost. Say you wanted to buy 15 units of these, that would make us in a potential profit of about 55 bucks. Right here, um, don't worry about the variations. The Google Sheets tab is a really, really important feature of SellerAmp, not enough people utilize. What the Google Sheets feature actually allows you to do is stay nice and organized, right? So you're gonna find as you're doing product research, oftentimes you're gonna see stuff that's like close to being good or it's out of stock, or it was really good last Q4 or last Halloween. And you wanna keep track of those leads, right? Because we're already putting so much time into finding stuff right here. So what we can actually do is just boom, export this out. And now this zaps over to 
a spreadsheet and you can add notes and track products over time to really be able to best utilize them. Right here, the offers tab lets you see the competition. The seller in the bold is who's getting the buy box right here, which is what we want to do. If you're unfamiliar with what the buy box is, it's actually this buy it now option right here on Amazon. Luckily, Amazon rotates the sales between all the sellers that are on the listing that are priced competitively right here, typically within like 10% of the lowest price. Right here, as we can see, there's about eight people that are within that um, on here. And we can see this guy's getting the buy box um, right here. Their stock counts, the profit on ROI, those buy costs, and everything like that. You can also see the history of when I've looked this up in the past too. And that's basically the basics of SellerAmp. And then we're going to talk about how you can use SellerAmp to actually find more products in a second as well. The other product research tool I like to use if you're just getting started on a budget is Keepa right here. So when you open Keepa, you're probably going to see three graphs when you embed it as your Chrome extension. I recommend clicking sub ranks right here, which actually lets you take away um, that graph because I think the middle graph is pretty much useless. Right here, what Keepa allows us to do is actually see the performance of a product over time. Right, so we can see the sales rank over time by zooming in right here. We can see the sales rank over time right there. So, this has historically been, you know, well below 50,000. It's been pretty good demand for a while. We can see the demand recently jumped up and went down to like a 2K rank right there. The estimated sales on seller amp does take into account a historical rank. So, that 400 sales per month is based off its history around like a 25 to 40K rank right there. I recommend mainly focusing on the three month data in Keepa. So we can scroll in on this chart and see that over time, this top chart shows the price. We're pretty profitable here the majority of the time, right? Looking back about 75 days, it was even up at like 18, up at 18. That leaves us a profit of like seven bucks. And then historically, it's been right in that 14 range, which leaves us a potential profit of like $4 per unit right there. The bottom chart is actually the competition. We can see Early August, the competition went up, but it's it's been very stable um, since then. So we can assume people are probably making money on this because they haven't really dropped their price, right? So you mainly want to be focused on the buy box price, the sales rank over time, and then the competition, right? If you're worried about too much competition on a product, the nice thing is that competition is largely correlated to price. So if the competition is really, really spiked up, which you'll see if you watch some of my other videos, typically the price is going to be headed down, which this product is not. As we can see, it's very stable. Um, right here. So um, this is, you know, what a winning product looks like, right? I don't recommend buying any stuff you see in, in uh, YouTube videos, right? Because lots of other people are seeing it. But methodology wise, it's important to see the breakdown of the numbers, right? A good rule of thumb is the one to two rule, which states that for a product to be profitable, you have to, uh, you have to be able to sell it for about double or more than what you buy it. So like this one, we're paying, you know, about five bucks right here. It sells for 14 historically. So that leaves us, you know, really good and solid ROI um, right here on that. Other features of Keepa that are very helpful. If you head here and hit data, and then we can see it goes to product details right here, we're actually going to be able to see a lot of advanced statistics and averages on this product over time. Right here, so we can see the sales rank over time. We can see it's very stable. Sometimes, like say we're getting into like the winter in a couple months, you'll see products will drastically drop in sales rank or increase in sales rank depending on how like what time of the year it is. For example, a lot of hoodies will drop in sales rank in the winter, which means their demand's picking up, which makes perfect sense. A lot of sunscreen, for example, will increase in sales rank during the winter and decrease in sales rank during the summer. So that's why it's important to mainly focus on like the 90 day and 30 day data right here. We can all see the buy box history as well as who's getting the buy box, stuff like that. It's also helpful to go here and see the buy box statistics. And then we can see who's had the buy box and at what price over time. Right here, so we can see 55% of it, 23% of it across a year, and everything like that. But the, the majority of the time you'll spend in Keepa is going to be uh, over here, actually taking a look at the charts right here. What's cool, we can see legitimately years of data on a specific product, how it's performed, the price history, and make educated buying decisions. Um, if you're taking notes, product research criteria, you know, you want to be mainly staying below 100,000 sales rank, 30% plus ROI. Um, typically selling products other people are selling, which validates that we can sell it and uh, such. If you're worrying about ungating, I have a full ungating tutorial in the description um, that'll be very helpful for you. So that's the basis of Keepa. And here's how, finishing up with product research on a budget, you can use SellerAmp to find a bunch of additional winning products, right? So taking a look at this guy right here, we can see this product is profitable, right? We can pick it up for uh, whatever, $4.75. It's selling for 14 ish Rare, pretty good numbers, right? The nice thing is that there's other people selling this and these sellers carry lots of other types of products, 
rare. So we can actually go ahead and scroll down here and see there's a bunch of other sellers selling this same product. We can go ahead and open up their storefronts right here and take a look inside of them, right? So I typically like to open up the, uh, the FBA, FBA sellers, right? So we can open up these seller storefronts and see all the different brands, all the different categories that these sellers carry and actually go ahead and filter to them, right? So let's say you really like selling this brand Nautica, for example, you could filter into all the different Nautica products, right? And doing reverse sourcing or storefront stocking, which is the sourcing method we're talking about in this video, you're actually able to learn a lot of other reseller friendly type brands, right? For example, right now we know ColourPop has a good deal going on, right? On their, on their site, right? So what we can do is we can filter into the ColourPop products right here and see 2K BSR, 18K BSR, 56K BSR, and we can see all these other brands as well, right? So you can take a look at Bath and Body Works, for example, or New Balance, for example. I've been able to find a lot of profits on New Balance as well. And then you can see what products have low sales ranks right here. And then you can open them up and actually go ahead and Google these products just using Celeram and take a look for them on Google Shopping as well, right there. So for example, the nice part is when you know a good deal is going on, it typically can be pretty hard, pretty easy to dial in in terms of finding additional products right here. So we can see, we know ColourPop has a good site-wide sale going on as well as they have 15% off, right? So we can see 2K rank right there, 18K rank right there, 56K rank right here. And we can go ahead and open up these products and go ahead and actually take a look for them and see if we can find more strong demand, 30% plus ROI type opportunities right here. So let's see, take a look at uh, this one right here. It's uh, 33 bucks. So thinking back to our one to two rule, see on Keepa that the price is headed in the right direction and competition has gone from 71 sellers all the way down to about 40 sellers right here. We want to hit Google on this guy right here. We can see, we'll make sure it's the right thing as this, you always want to make sure the title and picture look the exact same and that uh, everything checks out right here. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Truth or bear. Do you have a color right here? Yeah, so sometimes I'm like really not sure if it's the right product, so sometimes I'll stay away from it. Right here, typically you want to be able to see the packaging and such on that. Let's see. Okay, Truth or Bear. Okay, Truth. Okay, here we go. So this one has the same title right there, Truth or Bear, right here. Let's see, I definitely want to match up that, but we can see at its retail price of 29 that definitely doesn't work. But at $23.50, we're getting close. Right, and then we have that additional 15% off. So now it looks like a good product right here, but the problem is if we scroll down to the Keepa chart, we can see historically the value is much more around like 29-ish right here, which puts this to the point where it's uh, you know not really profitable, especially with sales tax factor and a couple extra percentage points on the buy cost right there. So that's definitely something I'm gonna want to avoid. Right here, let's see, this one's 24. We can see it's very nice and stable too, and then we can see it's 22. Early August, it's been rocking and rolling around like 24. Historically, damn, the price was really, really high in early June right there. The nice thing is you can see the performance using Keepa over time. Right here, so let's see right here. Shadow Moon Palette, okay, 15. All right, we're, we're flirting with being good right here. So at 22, down to 15.4. 15.4, take off 15% right there. So this one's awful close too. Yeah, it's about $3 profit. We can see at certain times this has been very profitable. So what I'd probably do in this case is scroll down and put this on an almost good spreadsheet in Celeramp right there. And what's clutch is you can, you know, we see there's unlimited products right here. So we can just rock and roll through all of this stuff and take a look at some other ones right here. So we can see this one. Yeah, so it's under 10 bucks right here. The reason why it's under 10 bucks is Amazon just turned on this new low fee feature um, for stuff that's below $9.99. So if we scroll down here, Celeramp's going to show us that right here. Let's see FBA fees right there. Yeah, $9.99 right here on that. Boom, right there. So we can see nice breakdown of that. And let's see. So we want to pay like $3 or less right here. Okay. Yeah, $5, six. That doesn't work. Although we can check, take a look at the variations on Keepa too. Maybe this one's 15 bucks, two sellers right here. Let's see. Ah, yeah. So this one's been at. Yeah, around 11 and around eight right there. So let's take a look right here. Oh, so it's the same buy cost. Yeah, $4.75 right there, $4.75. Yeah, so this is interesting. So the profit per unit's a little bit lower, but the ROI is really solid, 
Um, and we can see even around like 11 right there, we're still making a decent ROI. But historically, yeah, up at 15, it looks good. But there's also not a ton of sales volume on this. You guys see how there's not a ton of competition movement um, here. So I'd probably pass on this one, but we should be able to clean. Yeah, I'm sure one of these is good. You can take a look at you know all these on your own. Here, but 13 got one review, five sellers right here. Let's see if this is in stock right here. Yeah, so this seller's got uh, $8 or $12 delivery right here. So let's see, yeah, 13 bucks in the buy box consistently. All right, let's plug this in right here. Yeah, here we go. So we got $5.60 right here. Take off 15% right there. Buy box historically about $13.50 right there. And that's pretty nice profit. So that's another, you know, um, example of a winning product right there. So hope this was helpful for you guys. Use these products in reverse source from, right? There's a lot of opportunity with the stuff, right? We can see Sephora, uh, New Balance, Clinique, right? All these other brands you can store from stock and learn additional brands and such right here. If you guys want more like full seller amp focus, keep a focus, product research focus videos, they're all in the description. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next one.